Initially, chemicals were used to generate electricity. But if we are supplying power to a whole large area, don't you think we need a huge amount of chemicals? Instead, can we produce electricity using other methods? The great scientist Faraday says yes. He did it using a principle which we are going to learn in this video. We've already seen that an electric current sets up a magnetic field. But many people wonder if reverse of this is possible. In the year 1831, the British scientist Michael Faraday made one of the most significant contributions to the scientific world. He succeeded in producing electricity using a magnetic field and hence discovering electromagnetic induction. Electromagnetic induction is defined as the phenomenon of inducing EMF by changing the magnetic field in a coil. Take a coil of wire. Connect a galvanometer with this wire. Now bring a magnet near the coil. You can see that the galvanometer shows deflection. When the magnet is made stationary, the galvanometer shows no deflection. Next, take the magnet away from the coil. Again, we see the deflection in the galvanometer, but now in the opposite direction. Again, the magnet is made stationary. The galvanometer shows no deflection. In this experiment, just replace the first magnet with a stronger magnet. As we move this magnet towards the coil with the same speed, we find that the galvanometer shows more deflection. So we can say that the current induced in electromagnetic induction under identical conditions depends upon the strength of the magnetic field. Now, keeping the first magnet just increase the number of turns in the coil. As we move the magnet towards the coil, we can see that the galvanometer shows more deflection. Hence, we can say that the induced current also depends on the number of turns in the coil. Once again, keeping less number of turns in the coil and using the first magnet, if we increase the speed of the movement of the magnet, then also the galvanometer shows more deflection. So we can say that the induced current also depends on the speed of the movement of the magnet. Now take another wire and connect both of its ends to the galvanometer. Bring a horseshoe magnet near this setup. If we move a part of this wire between the magnetic poles, then we can observe some deflection in the galvanometer. Hence, we have seen that electric current can be produced in a coil by simply moving a magnet in and out of it. From many such experiments, Faraday gave the following conclusions for electromagnetic induction. One. The current is produced when the wire is moved relative to the magnet. Two, the current is produced when the magnet is moved relative to the coil. Three, no current flows when both coil and the magnet are stationary with respect to each other. Four, reversing the direction of movement reverses the direction of the current. 5. Magnitude of the current increases with the number of loops in the coil, strength of the magnetic field, and the speed of movement of the magnet or coil. An electric generator which is used to produce electricity is the best example of machines that work on the principle of electromagnetic induction. Let's have a quick recap. We have learned electromagnetic induction is the phenomenon of inducing EMF by changing the magnetic field linked with a coil. From many experiments, Michael Faraday gave the following conclusions for electromagnetic induction. 1. The current is produced when the wire is moved relative to the magnet. 2. 
The current is produced when the magnet is moved relative to the coil. 3. No current flows when both coil and the magnet are stationary with respect to each other. 4. Reversing the direction of movement reverses the direction of the current. 5. Magnitude of the current increases with the number of loops in the coil, strength of the magnetic field and the speed of movement of the magnet or coil. An electric generator, electricity, is the best example of machines that work on the principle of electromagnetic induction. Faraday was a curious physicist. It is said that he had tried more than a thousand different ways to come to a conclusion using the same experimental setup. While in the trial process, his observation led to a new path of physics called electromagnetism. Try finding out on what basis he explained this. We will discuss this in our upcoming videos. Keep imbibing. We believe in you.